here in Leverborough in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland and we're just about to get on board the boat behind me and we're heading out to St Kilda which is one of the remotest islands in the UK. It's about a 50 mile journey from the Outer Hebrides so it's a long way out, it takes about two and a half hours. The conditions today, it's, it's a bit lumpy out there, um, it's very overcast. We're motoring out into the gloom at the moment. There's no sign of St Kilda. We probably won't see it until we get quite close today. It's one of my favourite places in the whole of the British Isles. So we've landed on the St Kilda after quite a rough passage across today from Harris. Straight away when you step ashore here you're struck by what a barren and remote place it is here. At the moment I'm wandering along what would have been St Kilda's only street and um, today it's very much in an abandoned state. The St Kildans lived in very meagre accommodation and um, we're just going to walk into one now and uh, you can imagine how low that roof was for me to fit through there. I certainly wouldn't have made it through standing up. It's quite sobering to think that until the 1930s this was someone's house. It was in the 30s when the St Kildans finally abandoned the island because their way of life was no longer sustainable. A lot of that was due to its remote location and the population grew older and the younger people left and the way of life slowly became unsustainable. There's a plaque in this house that I'm walking through now that says the date of the last family to live here. The incredible things about the St Kildans for me was their ability to live out here in such harsh conditions. They survived out here living mainly off the seabirds that they used to catch. It's hard to imagine being out here through the winters completely cut off from civilization. Today it's taken us two and a half hours doing about 20 knots on a, a modern boat pushing hard against quite a big sea today to get here. For the St Kildans it would have been a two-day row across open Atlantic Ocean and that was just to reach the other outer Hebrides islands. Being a howling gale with wind and rain in your face is really the proper way to experience St Kilda. The weather certainly hasn't got any better. Um, it's still looking pretty bleak and closing in. We've got real low cloud cover today, but I'm going to attempt to walk out of the town now and up the hills behind the town and see what else we can see. Wow, what downpour. I'd call that downpour. I don't even need a bottle of drinking water today, I can just stand here with my mouth open. See the bay where we came in behind me down there. Just about through the rain. But we're going to keep on going and uh, see what we can see at the top there. Probably more rain and clouds. So at the moment we're on the um, top of St Kilda. Just moments ago this was in thick clouds and I couldn't see any of this at all. Cloud cover shifts, you really start getting a feel for the scale of the island and the, the brutality and the sheerness of it. There's new bits of the island that are kind of revealing themselves out of the cloud every minute at the moment. Hopefully the visibility will keep on increasing throughout the day. We're going to keep on walking on across the island. There's also some military installations on St Kilda as well and behind me you can see what looks like one of the radar domes which is uh, it's kind of strange, you want somewhere like this to be completely unspoiled but there's a number of military buildings here too. What's in front of me, that is absolutely beautiful, it looks like something out of a uh, fantasy novel. That wind certainly picking up but I think this is probably about as far as we're going to walk across the island today and wow, like what an amazing view. It wasn't there 10 minutes ago, it was hidden in the clouds and it's come out. 
for me it's just an incredibly beautiful, barren and unique place. What an incredible place St Kilda is. At the end we went out to have a look at the stacks around St Kilda. Um, they're amazing but it was really really rough out there. So what an absolutely incredible day it's been today out on St Kilda. Um, we've had every type of rain imaginable. We've had a great passage back tonight. It's pretty rough. A few green faces down below. Literally just arriving into Port and Harris now. It's been an incredible day. If you're interested in remote places, check out my travel blog. And also, if you're interested in visiting St Kilda, check out my article on how to get there.